Hi, Micropunter here. My refrigerator is a great source uh, for microscopic specimens. Look at this carrot. It's totally moldy and uh, I think it's a really great specimen to put under the microscope. Well, first of all, every time when you handle mold, be careful because the spores, of course, they can cause allergies and some people start to get asthmatic attacks when they inhale that. So be careful when you uh, handle it. And under the steering microscope, you, we can see very well the fuzzy nature of the so-called mycelium. These are um, the cells that are connected together in long strings and they are the actual mold. Uh, so the, this mycelium actually grows into the carrot or into the medium that it wants to digest and then the cells release enzymes. I'm now going to uh, put uh, the mold under my uh, compound microscope. Uh, I carefully take a small sample, again not disturbing it too much because I do not want to get the spores uh, scattered uh, around in the air. Um, and I put it into the drop of water and because it's so dense I'm carefully trying to pick it apart a little bit so that it's uh, more easily visible um, under the microscope. And of course uh, at the end the cover glass has to go on top of it and this also presses everything flat and makes uh, everything much uh, easier visible. Yeah, So it goes under the microscope of course we start uh, with the low power um, four times magnifying objective and what do you see? Well not a lot. Um, as a matter of fact the mycelium the f is so dense that uh, you cannot even see the individual fibers. The hyphae they're called, you shouldn't call them fibers, they're hyphae and collectively it makes the mycelium. And uh, that means we have to go a little bit uh, higher magnification, 10 times uh, objective. And now we can uh, already see the branched and string-like nature of the fungus. Uh, when I say branched, uh, then it basically, it's exactly that what I'm referring to. Um, the, the strings uh, essentially branch apart uh, and uh, they diverge this way. Uh, what I've not seen are the spores. That's kind of, it's kind of surprised me a little bit. Uh, and I saw some other, um, in the liquid, I saw some other dots floating around. Could be bacteria, I'm not so sure about that. Um, they could be moving because of Brownian motion as well. But I could not see any spores. Where in the world are they? Um, so um, I looked around. Uh, here we see again a branch branching right in the center here. And uh, we also saw some cell organelles inside the individual cells. Uh, but uh, the spores that I'm kind of used to, I did not find any. So what I have done ultimately, I have uh, later on uh, taken a second sample of a different part of the carrot. Um, and there I found some more spores. I'll show this to you later. Uh, but right now I was simply enjoying the different uh, structures um, of the hyphae and of the mycelium. And well, these are the things that actually release enzymes uh, to digest the substrate on which it's growing. And this is actually the harmful thing why uh, fun fungi can actually break down organic material and also vegetables like in this case. Now, if you see moldy food like this, uh, some people simply cut off uh, the moldy part and uh, eat the rest. I think that's not a good idea um, because uh, all of the mold, what they do is they produce so-called mycotoxins, these are poisons, and uh, they diffuse into the rest of the food. So even if the uh, lower part here it, it still appears to be intact, it's quite well possible that still some of the mycotoxin have already traveled down and have accumulated in the remaining carrot. So I would say it don't take the risk, throw the whole thing away. Yeah, so I picked up a new sample and I was successful. Look at this. This log, uh, dark round structure in the mi middle, that's a so-called sporangium and it's uh, forming this egg-shaped spores and there are plenty of these spores now visible. Um, and uh, of course uh, these spores, they scatter in this case by air and they start to form a uh, new fungus this way. And uh, what I've done now also is I've zoomed in a little bit uh, more to also see the structure of the individual spores better. And later on, I'm also going to show you um, how they look in phase contrast. But first of all, let's pick a, a nice uh, specimen here. Yeah, there are three of them next to each other. And the liquid around it is flowing by because the spores seem to be uh, squeezed between the cover glass and the slide. So they basically stay put because they are fixed in place, um, but the liquid on the outside is uh, flowing and here again a close-up of the sporangium and you see the individual spores a little bit like grapes <laughs> growing together. Yeah, um, here the, the thing that's coming approaching from the top that's an air bubble. So we're at the edge um, of the slide and the water is evaporating and pushing along uh, the spores. So this here is in bright field still, um, just to have a close look and remember how it looks like because in a second or so I'm going to switch over to phase contrast so that you can see how the image looks different. So we're still in bright field, I'm focusing back and forth and now we switch over, okay, focus again 
and look how the contrast is different. That is face contrast now. You know, it's actually uh, much uh, better visible because the spores and the uh, mycelium they have now basically a strong contrast to the background. Now here again a spore, look at the spore in the middle, that is bright field. And now we're here again in phase contrast. So it's much uh, better visible in phase contrast. And the last try here I really zoomed in a lot. Bright field and in a second or so again phase contrast. Yeah, I think uh, that's enough for today. That's well, enough that's for it, today. People, um, wish you all the best. Uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you liked it. Uh, also leave your comments uh, below. Um, and also, if you're interested, uh, have a look um, at the microscopy web shop. Everything is in the description. Happy micro hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye-bye.